happening now. A community in mourning, the pain of 20 lives now lost, still searing. I had four nieces. They're all dead. They were in there. Teachers, professors, newlyweds, and sisters, all dead after the tragedy in Schoharie. I'm empty. I, um, it's an indescribable pain. I have, like, no words for it. Um, never felt a pain like this ever in my life. And as we're learning more about the victims, shocking new information about the limo company and driver now under scrutiny. The owner of the company had no business putting a failed vehicle on the road. The owner of Prestige has a lot of questions to answer. Full coverage straight ahead this morning. Happening now. A state of emergency. Oh, it's been a nightmare. A massive rescue effort. We want to get them. We want to get the people out there and we want to get them rescued. Made more difficult with downed trees and roadways swept away. And this morning, that debris piled up on the side of the road as cleanup begins. Happening now. Hundreds of thousands without power, entire communities leveled. Just as quickly as he swept in, Michael now heading out to sea, but it's going to be a long road of rebuilding. Victims of that deadly limo crash being laid to rest starting today as new details about the limo's failed safety inspections come to light. Well, we've reached a tipping point and our emotions and everything else is spilled on the floor. So now is the time. The police chief talking about the death of a 12 year old, his life taken in a shooting on the north side as outrage and grief spreads through the city. He and other leaders are calling for an end to the senseless violence. The caller saying there are three children inside that residence. Three children inside the residence fully involved. A community now mourning the loss of three children as that investigation continues into what caused that deadly fire in Rome. First, it's been a soggy week and it's even soggier today. Kate's in with a look at Live Doppler 9 right off the top. All right, week two of Friday Morning Lights. We are live here with the Chitnango Bears. Bears. He's stretching. He's getting ready. We're all pumped up. It is going to be a fantastic morning here in Friday Morning Lights as we are featuring the Chitnango Bears as they have a big game tonight against Central Valley. In the news this morning, six people hospitalized. They will all recover from their injuries, we're now told, after a car chase ends with a crash into a house in Volney. Investigators are still on the scene. We're live at the accident site. And the primary elections are over. Governor Cuomo won big. Dave Valeski is on the ropes. We'll have all of the results coming up for you right here at your local election headquarters. And Hurricane Florence creeping towards the coast. She has just made landfall. Those whipping winds and flooding rains now coming on shore. Ending his working vacation right here in central New York. Full coverage of the fanfare and opposition of President Donald Trump's visit. But first, Storm Team Alert, a slow-moving system that's already caused flooding along the East Coast, now moves into central New York. Kate's tracking where the flood threats are happening this morning. From WSYR-TV Syracuse, the local station, you're watching the morning news. There's breaking news this morning out of Oswego County. Six people have been hospitalized after a car crashes into another car and then a home and catches fire. Well, 608 right now, we are following some breaking news. And there is breaking news out of Oneida County this morning where three young children have been killed in a house fire in Rome. Very early to determine exactly the cause of, uh, of the fire. There is breaking news this morning. 551, nine minutes till six. Breaking news out of Oswego County this morning. We have breaking news at this hour. Syracuse police and firefighters remain on the scene after a reported explosion downtown. Time right now is 6.36. We have two pieces of breaking news. First, locally in the city of Syracuse, nearly 3,000 people are without power. We are also following breaking news along Interstate 81 south of Syracuse. All northbound lanes are closed because of a tractor-trailer fire. All lanes closed. You're going to have to detour. Take a live look. Crews on the scene right now investigating. We are here on scene. The severity of the crash forced them to shut this area of Route 31 down. We're following breaking news this morning from the city of Cortland. 631, we have some breaking news from Syracuse's west side overnight. Police were on the scene of a reported shooting. 
At 631, four buildings badly damaged by flames, more dealing with smoke after a huge fire on Syracuse's north side yesterday. It looked like something out of a movie. You couldn't miss it driving home if you're anywhere near Syracuse. Fire crews are still on the scene of this one. Neighbors on Syracuse's north side still reeling after a 12 year old was killed. It hurts bleed for these families, for our children, and what's going on in our community. In the last month alone, 12 Syracuse children or teens were either wounded or killed from senseless violence. No part of the city seems immune. This week's deadly shooting was on the north side. On the south side, an eight year old girl was among five people shot on Midland Avenue last month, and a 15 year old boy died just last week on the west side. People are scared, and we don't, uh, we don't underestimate that. Uh, there are anonymous ways to share information. Calls for cooperation, collaboration, and communication ringing very loud and clear. So sharing information, even the slightest detail on a crime, can be really key. All you need to do is search Syracuse PD in your phone or your iPad, and you'll come up with the Syracuse PD app. Across upstate New York, communities, families, and friends are reeling after that deadly limo crash Saturday that claimed the lives of 20 people. The tragedy in Schoharie is the deadliest transportation accident in America in almost a decade. And we've now learned that a professor at SUNY Oswego was one of those killed in the crash. Even if you don't know who he was, but you probably do know someone who knew who he was or you're connected in some way. His impact hundreds of students every semester. Families and friends of those 20 people trying to come to terms with the fact their loved ones are suddenly no longer here. I just prayed for healing for their families and for the kids. A Watertown couple was also killed in the limo crash, Mary and Rob Dyson. From the loss of life to the investigation itself into this horrific crash, it took a major turn. The governor's office was the first to report midday yesterday that the limousine, a 2001 Ford excursion, had failed its inspection just last month and shouldn't even have been on the road. The driver should not have been behind the wheel. He didn't have the appropriate driver's license. The company, Prestige Limo, says they have now taken all their vehicles off the road until this investigation is over. But there's still a lot of things left to do and there's still a lot of questions left to be answered. The devastating flooding in Seneca County. Oh, it's been a nightmare. The pictures don't do it justice, it's just destruction. Everything's gone. Neighbors from the southern tier all the way up to Oswego County impacted by fast and powerful downpours. Huge force. And when it gets moving, it'll take pretty much anything that's in its way with it. Rains, flooding rivers and streams overflowing onto roads and taking out anything in its path. Emergency crews overcoming some challenges, though, to evacuate residents. It was, it was a massive debris field, and I'm talking not just sticks and stones, but um, logs, trees that were blocking our ability to get there. Governor Andrew Cuomo declared a state of emergency for most of central New York and the southern tier. Now, the National Weather Service says the storm could be a once-in-a-lifetime event for the Carolinas. It's happening right now. The southeast is preparing for a head-on hit from Hurricane Florence. I think it's going to hit us pretty, pretty hard. So let's get up to the moment right now with Storm Team Meteorologist Kate Thornton mm -hmm. tracking Florence for us. Kate? Yeah, still a Category 4 monster devastating storm, and it is making a beeline right for the Carolina coast. And we have team coverage this morning as the storm is set to make landfall within 24 hours. From your local election headquarters, Governor Andrew Cuomo responding to some jabs from President Donald Trump. Governor Andrew Cuomo ratcheting up his verbal feud with President Trump. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. <laughs> President Trump reacted to Cuomo's comments on Twitter. The president said, quote, can you believe this is the governor of the highest taxed state in the U.S., Andrew Cuomo, having a total meltdown. The war of words on Twitter between the president and our governor. 533 primary election results now from your local election headquarters at 636, 24 now before 7. Election news, a brand new independent poll is just out. Here's some big local election news. News Channel 9 confirms that Vice President Mike Pence is coming to central New York. Well, good afternoon. I'm Dan Cummings. Vice President Mike Pence is in Syracuse today at this moment, headed from Hancock Airport to the Embassy Suites at Destiny USA for the beginning of an event-filled afternoon. Within the hour, as Air Force Two touched down, so far, how was the reception at the airport? 
a very warm reception here, Dan. People waited here probably two hours to see Vice President and the Second Lady get here. So behind me, you're seeing Air Force Two. Our Andrew Donovan is live there right now. And Andrew, while the event itself, the fundraiser, is closed to the public and the press, uh, this place is drawing crowds of people with money for CATCO and criticism outside the event, right? <laughs> Well, Dan, the people you're going to hear immediately are the protesters, nearly 200 people. And I'm going to have Jack, our photographer, just spin down Solar Street here toward Destiny USA. Nearly 200 people are making their presence known as we expect the vice president to drive down Solar Street in the next few minutes. Here comes the motorcade up Solar Street right towards the embassy suites at Destiny USA. Continuing live coverage after this break. A whirlwind day for central and northern New York, hosting President Donald Trump. This afternoon, Trump will head to Griffiths International Airport. He's expected to arrive there around 4 o'clock. In Oneida County, the president will host a closed-door roundtable with supporters and attend a private fundraiser for Congresswoman Claudia Tenney. For this is formerly known as Hangar 2060 for all other days. But today, it's built a stage for a presidential visit. This is likely the closest we'll be allowed to Hotel Utica all day. It doesn't look too different from an average day in downtown Utica. Not a huge police presence just yet, but we expect that to change as President Trump gets closer as he lands in Fort Drum and then lands at Griffiths in Rome and then makes his drive via motorcade down to the city of Utica. Jennifer, stand by. We're going to have lots of fair news in just a moment. She's already got that smile on her face despite the heat and humidity. The heat's not stopping people from coming out here to the great New York State Fair. Of course, records are being broken. Yes, For yes. a nominal fee, you okay, can come and take a whack at this car. And all money collected <laughs> will go to go. buy ground beef for needy families. How about Christmas in August? Why not? And why not at the State Fair, right? For some, the State Fair is a go-to place for some early Christmas shopping. News Channel Line's Farah Jadrin is live right now at the fairgrounds this morning. So far, it feels real early to be thinking about Christmas, mm -hmm. but not at certain places at the fair, right? Right, it feels a little early, but when you think about it, we're less than four months away from Christmas Day. And while it may, may be a little bit surprising to think that time is ticking away, but it is for some people to get those gifts, and some of that shopping is happening right here on the fairgrounds. School is back in session for a majority of central mm -hmm. New York districts today, but it's feeling a lot more like summer. We've got team coverage as the kids head back to school. We've got 100 buses that are rolling out right now, going out to pick up kids. Enjoy the first day of school, everybody. It's an exciting time. The culinary arts, we are going to be featuring them. And let me tell you, I am so excited because these cookies, they look delicious. I love being part of the culinary program here at ITC because um, I love to cook. So graduate with a culinary degree that we will use to go straight into the food industry. We've got Friday morning lights working for you at Chittenango High School. We have a lot of school spirit here at Chittenango. I mean, I've never seen it like this before. <laughs> we have the football team, we have the soccer team, we have everyone is here this morning. Uh, just our chemistry, being a family, working together. The, the football team has done a great job preparing for this moment. We're really happy that you're all with us this morning. You know, the excitement really extends beyond just the football game. It's about the school spirit, the community spirit. So we have our first home game tomorrow, so we're hoping to get the win at home. That's we're really awesome. excited. Oh, let's, let's go. go. The Chidango Bears. We are here live cheering them on against Central Valley Academy. Week two of Friday Morning Lights is in the book. Thanks so much for joining us on News Channel 9, the morning news.